All right, so in this video, we're gonna consider the space of continuous functions on the interval from zero to one. And we're gonna show that uh, the closed unit ball in this space is not compact with respect to the supremum norm. Okay, so to prove this, we have the following fact, uh, which is that in any metric space, a set is compact if and only if it's sequentially compact. So uh, meaning that for any sequence that's uh, contained in the set, it has a subsequence that converges to a limit that's in the set. So this is uh, true in um, the real numbers, but it's true in an arbitrary metric space as well. So we're gonna use this. Um, so we'd like to consider the sequence fn, okay, given by fn is equal to t to the n. Okay, so these are continuous functions, uh, so they're contained in omega, and in absolute value, they're not uh, gonna be larger than one on this interval, and so these are all contained in B. Okay, so each Fn is contained in B. Right, and I'm going to claim that uh, no subsequence of Fn converges. Um, so suppose that f and k is a subsequence of fn with limit f in omega. So for contradiction, we're going to assume that uh, this does, in fact, converge. And then we'll see that uh, that's actually impossible. Okay. Right, so if this were true, uh, what would it mean? Well, it would mean that uh, for n sufficiently large, the supremum norm of f and k uh, and f uh, could be made arbitrarily small. Um, so this would mean that the supremum of t in 0 to 1 of f and k of t, okay, minus f of t, uh, can be made less than epsilon. And this is for any epsilon greater than zero. Okay, but uh, note that this basically just means that the f and k converges uniformly to f, right? So this is the same as saying that um, uniformly on the interval from zero to one, the distance between these two is less than epsilon. Right, so this is kind of what it means to converge in the supremum norm. It just means that you converge uniformly. Great. Um, so then in particular, this also means that the f and k converge to f pointwise. Right, because if f and k converges to f uniformly, it means that at each point, um, f and k minus f is less than epsilon. Because this supremum is uh, less than epsilon whenever, uh, well, okay. I guess this is when n k is sufficiently large. But, you know, this, this is less than epsilon, and this is a supremum. So at each point, we have that the difference between these two is, you know, less than or equal to this supremum. And so it definitely converges uh, pointwise. Great. So now we want to recall that um, if we have a, a subsequence, um, right, so if we consider a fixed t in this interval, 
Um, what we know is that this sequence, f and k of t, so just at this specific point, this converges to the pointwise limit of fn of t. Right, and so this is because the f and k of t for a fixed t, this is just a subsequence of the sequence fn of t. Um, so whatever it converges to, it's, it's going to be the same as, as whatever the kind of parent sequence converges to. Um, but we know what the pointwise limit of fn was, right? Because remember that fn was t to the n. Um, and so we know that this converges pointwise, converges pointwise to f of t given by, um, what is this, 1 if t is equal to 1, and then 0 if t is between 0 and 1, like this. Um, so this is the pointwise limit, right? Because if t is equal to 1, as n gets bigger, this is just constantly equal to 1. And then as uh, if... if um, t is less than 1, then the numbers keep getting smaller, and they converge to 0. Um, but um, f of t is not an element of omega, right? Because this is clearly not a continuous function. It's just equal to 0, and then it has a discontinuity when t is equal to 1. Uh, so this is not in omega. Um, you know, so therefore, um, we actually proved something stronger, right? Which is that f and k has no limit in omega. And, you know, we really just wanted to show that it has no limit in b, right? Because b was equal to um, this closed ball. Right, so the soup norm is less than or equal to 1. So really, we just needed to show that f and k has uh, no limit in b, but we actually proved something stronger, which is that it has no limit in omega, right? Um, but this is what we wanted to show. So this proves that b is not compact. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching.